dinner. One 14 pound turkey. Some nice rolls. What you call these rolls? Shibata. Shibata rolls. No, Shibata. Shibata rolls. Shibata. Shut my mouth. <laughs> Asparagus wrapped in bacon. What kind of potatoes are these? Those are whipped red potatoes. Whipped red potatoes with garlic. with garlic and cranberry sauce. You think that's enough? For now. All right. Hey, Let's you try Phil and Florence. Well, we are approaching Thanksgiving Day. And Janet bought two turkeys recently. Good price, too. I got one here today. It's a 14.6 pound. I thought it was a 12 pounder, but it's a little bit more. Here it is right here. Shady Brook Farms. I'm planning on spatchcocking this turkey. And I'm going to attempt to do it on the Weber kettle. A Christy over at Christy's Cooking Channel recently did a spatchcock turkey and hers was a 14 pounder so she was able to get hers on the kettle using the slow and sear so I'm going to try to do the same thing. So stick around and I'll show you how I do that. <laughs> I'm recording. Let's open this thing up. Let's put a little water on it and wash it off. I'm going to be taking this thing here off. Get they put in it. Of course, we'll be taking the, the neck out. Here's that plastic deal. Take the pop-up timer out. Won't need that. Take the giblets out. Neck. Won't be using those. Janet's wanting them to make her giblet gravy, I think. And we'll just give them a bath. Cutting off this tail here. Don't need that. Let's see what else we don't need. This extra skin around the neck. Get that out of the way. There's another piece. Okay. And we'll finish cleaning the insides out after we spatchcock it. I like that word. Spatchcock. Okay, enough of that. We'll get us some paper towels here. Let's hold this thing up and just let it drain some water out. I'm gonna dry it off and I'll come right back to you in just a minute. We've got it patted down, washed up, trimmed up. Now we're going to spatchcock this turkey and that means turn it over and cut the backbone make two cuts right there and cut the backbone out so we can use these uh, cutters here they seem to work pretty good last time i tried it with the chicken so let's see how it can handle the turkey i bragged on it this has a different uh grip in the way the the jaws are hinged they cut easier than using kitchen shears in my opinion they have more cutting power the way the the jaws are set on the tool. You don't have to use as much squeeze pressure. It's falling right along that back right there. Don't make me get out old hickory. There we go. I'll spin him around, get that last place. There we go. 
You can boil that and use that for stock too. If you want to splay it out real good. And then you press down and split that open. There we go. Bone off right there. Anything else that's bothering you, just take it off. These bones that are sticking up. That's right there. Alright. I'm good with that. I want these serve no purpose. See there? There we go. What we're going to do is salt, do a dry brine, and salt this thing down. There we go. I think I found it. Oh yeah. Okay, what we're going to do is take this turkey, put it on this rack like this. We'll give it 24 hours and I'll meet you back in here tomorrow and we're going to season it up before we put it on the Now this is the, the next grill. morning. I'm ready to put together the garlic butter and my injection. So let's get started on that. All right, guys, we've got the garlic butter done. We've got the injection done. Now, this is going to be the basting uh, mixture for 24 hours with a salt, dry salt, or a dry brine with the salt on it, as you saw me do. I was going to separate the skin so I could get that garlic butter, uh, garlic butter up under there. It's just been a few minutes, and as you can see, I've kept working with it. Now I can get my entire hand up under that skin. All right, I got my garlic butter here. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and put this on. Just grab you a, a gob of it. Spread it out in your hand. And just start rubbing it underneath that skin. You know. No uh, rules, just get it under there. It ought to be a pretty golden brown turkey once we get through with it. Open it up, just get all up in there. Uh, we got the bird back out. Been in the fridge for a while while we were watching some football. I got the grill heating up. We're waiting for the right time. So, got my injector. Now, see the holes come up this high and with that flat pot. Now, this is what I was looking for. Here we go. Gonna go in the breast. Just gonna go in right here and move that out the way so I don't knock it over. And make a happy place out of the kitchen. Just pull out a little bit. And I can see it trying to come back out. Mm-hmm. That's going to make a difference, I do believe. Let's see. Make sure I got the, the thigh meat. Yeah. All right, I think that's good enough. We got just about all of it. All right, we're going to go out to the cooker and put it on. Using the slow and sear. We got this bird sitting down. Flat breast towards the. I'm gonna pull it back as much as I can so it won't burn. Clip. Where'd it go? I'm glad I checked. There we go. All right, everything is good. I'm gonna close that down. 
Wide open vent on the top. We're going up to 325. There we go. And the food. Hit food. And we're going down to 165. There we go. All right, right now, the food's at 43. I think I'm going to get them where they're alternating again. Hold up and the pit down. And it'll start alternating back and forth. 150 on the pit, 43 on the food. Okay. Let's see the I know you'll probably say you don't need a guru to do a chicken or a turkey, but I just got this toy and I want to play with it. So, I'm going to play with my toys. I just want to see what it'll do with this turkey. That That's all that's about. So, there you go. We're going to see if it makes a difference. If it'll hold 325. we got to start our timer. Here we go. And there's my other setups. And it's running continuously, of course, trying to get it up there. That's what it's supposed to be doing. You see it? All right. Well, Toby, you can see where he's at. He's not far away, ever. We finally got a 325 on the Guru. Meets at 112. Let's see, 325. The Storm has got 307 and 90 on the food. So, I don't know. They came together and now they kind of separated a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna go by the Guru. <laughs> I'm going by the Guru. I'm getting ready to open this up and baste it for the first time. Hold on just a minute. Let me turn this camera around. Yeah, if you want to know where the dragon wing was, here it is. That is a handy little feature there. All right, I don't want this lid to be off long. That's looking good. It needs uh, basting. Basting, a little dry looking. Might have to tint the this you can tell it's a little hotter on the top and on the front so i don't know i might need to turn it around or do something like that i'm getting some alarms hmm. where's my bricks at i put the bricks in front of it remember that ken <laughs> Where's my bricks? It's been an hour and 33 minutes. Uh, I know I'll probably have to do some tinting or covering up or something. Let's see. And I'm going to baste the turkey. Let's baste it again. Okay. Everybody go together. Everybody go together. Okay, okay guys, we're an hour and 46 minutes into this cook. 14.6 pound turkey. And the Guru's at 325. It's been doing a good job holding at it. 145, 145 internal temp. 325 on the storm, 141. On the temp, so I'd say that's a We're success. Close. We're at 156. 319. It's been holding 325 just fine. But, uh, it's getting dark on me. I just wanted to show you one last shot. I'm getting ready to put this bacon wrapped aspar asparagus on. 
It hit 165. Done. It's done. It took about three hours, really. Uh, about two hours and 15 or 20 minutes, it, the alarm went off that it was done, but when I started poking around with the thermal pump, um, I still had a ways to go on the breast. The thigh and the leg area was done. So I had to leave it on and it went right on to three hours, but it did a good job. The guru did a good job. And you know, after a while, when we got into the cook, the smoke and the guru got together and you know, I was pleased with it and uh, it, it held it. And you know, you have the lid open feature and the ramp feature and those things were working. When I got to where it was like two and a, two hours and 20 minutes, the ramp feature started rolling back the temperature, which is what it does to the set temperature. And so I didn't really want that. I wanted it to cook through. So I went in the menu, the settings and turn the ramp off so it would pick back up to 325 again. So you have to learn, you know, how that thing works. All right, let's look at this thing. Ta-da! You think that'll work? You think that'll do? <laughs> That's a pretty one. Mm -hmm. Look at that turkey. Yeah, get me some good shots there, Jeff. That'll work. All right, let's lift this out of here over to this cutting board. This is a 14.6 pound turkey. All right, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take these uh, dark quarters off. It shouldn't take much effort at all to just lift these off of there. Now, here we go. Okay. That's pretty. Mm-hmm. Then, I'm going to come in and cut these wings off. Now I'm going to go down and take this breast and slide it, slide this knife down and take that breast off. Show this to the people, my Ooh. new slicer. <laughs> Yes. This is a Victoria Knox, straight from Amazon. We're gonna slice meat now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like the way that works. No wonder everybody's ribs and briskets look so good. Just don't cut your hand, the tip of your finger off. I think it would do it. All right. Got a lot of pretty meat here. Mm -hmm. Let's just go in there and take us a piece out. It, it's nice and juicy. I injected it, and so there's juice running everywhere. Let's try a piece of it. The skin, the skin was uh, when I took it up. The skin was uh, nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Let's try a piece. Mm. <laughs> That'll eat real good on my plate. <laughs> How about it, Jeff? You'd like to try a little piece of this? Sure. Mmm. It's so moist and tender. Why are you not looking? Mm -mm. Mm. Man, that's really good. Got a great flavor. Mm -hmm. Super moist. Mm. I'm gonna do like uh, Lyle. He wants to talk, but he's going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, another cook uh, in the books. I hope you enjoyed what I did today. I uh, used the guru on a turkey cook on the Weber kettle. I know many of you say you don't need a guru to cook a chicken or a turkey on a Weber kettle. But like I said, it's my new toy. <laughs> Plus I hadn't seen anybody do it. So I wanted to do it to see how it would work. And it worked fine. You saw the turkey. You saw the results. And, and I know you can do it without it. But, uh, you know, it's just something else to post on YouTube.
<laughs> a turkey done on a Weber kettle using the slow and sear with a barbecue guru. <laughs> so there you have it. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. From me and from... Jeff. Jeff. And Tiff. And Tiff. He's down there waiting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's waiting for something. <laughs> Hey, Jay, uh, Toby. Toby. Oh, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> he had to, he had to show off a little bit yep. for the camera. Yep. Well, listen. Until next time, this is Phil and Florence. And Janet and Florence. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. That's right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>